From childhood fairy tales, you may have heard of sprites, fairy-like magical creatures, but to scientists, this word has a completely different meaning. On rare occasions, if the night sky is clear during a thunderstorm, you may be lucky enough to see a sprite. Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about sprites. When scientists talk about sprites, they usually don't mean this or this. A sprite, well more precisely a red sprite, is a red flash of light on the sky, sometimes resembling the tentacles of jellyfish. These rare phenomena usually coincide with a thunderstorm and are only visible when the sky is clear because they occur in the upper atmosphere. Together with pixies, gnomes, elves and blue jets, red sprites are what we call luminous transient events. And even though they are related to lightning, they are not the same thing. Our atmosphere can be divided into different areas depending on the altitude. The lower atmosphere is called the troposphere. It's about up to 20 kilometers in altitude and roughly coincides with the ozone. Planes fly within this area and the thunderstorms that you're probably most used to seeing occurs here. Beyond the ozone layer and out to about 50 kilometers altitude is the stratosphere. This layer of atmosphere is what absorbs most of the UV radiation from the sun. And for this reason, very strangely, in this layer, it gets warmer the higher you go. It's in this layer that you may also be able to find blue jets. Even rarer than red sprites, these blue electrical discharges shoot up into the atmosphere. Above the stratosphere and out to about 85 kilometers is the mesosphere, which is the layer where most meteorites will burn up upon entry to the Earth. And the aurora also happen here. In this layer, things start to get cold again, but this is where red sprites are found, electrical discharges, but without the heat. They're more like a glow of fluorescent light. They're very bright, but a cold plasma phenomena. So they're technically not lightning, which is a hot phenomena. Lastly, the thermosphere. It's more like outer space than part of our own atmosphere. It spans out to almost 700 kilometers in altitude. And in fact, even the International Space Station, as well as many other satellites, are orbiting in this space. In the thermosphere, you can find elves, concentric rings of emissions. These upper atmosphere phenomena are really difficult to study because we can't reach them with scientific instruments. They're too high for weather balloons and too low for satellites. But then again, I wouldn't fancy flying through a thunderstorm anytime soon either, would you? For this reason, they're still largely a mystery. For many years, it was debated if these phenomena were even real. But in 1989, the Space Shuttle recorded one of the first video evidence of their existence when flying over a thunderstorm. Of course, it was in black and white back then, but more recently in 2015, ESA astronaut Andreas Morgensen captured video of blue jets from the International Space Station. And this helped confirm that we can study these phenomena from the space station. It was this that inspired a more permanent installation on the International Space Station. The Atmosphere Space Interactions Monitor, or ASIM for short, is a collection of optical, X-ray and gamma ray detectors to observe thunderstorm generated electrical discharges. 
Electrical storms like these reach into the stratosphere and have implications for how our atmosphere protects us from the radiation. So it's really important that we properly understand these phenomena. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.